Jax is back and more OP than ever. I'll explain why later in this video. What's up everybody, I'm Btrue and today I'm running down the 8 biggest changes coming in patch 6.11. Now the question of this video is going to be, who is the champion that you don't see too often now that you think we're going to see a lot more of with the new Triforce changes that are coming? And last time I made one of these patch rundown videos, we got the 10 likes that I asked for so this time I'm bumping it up to if we get 15 likes on this video, I'll make another one of these patch rundowns for patch 6.12. And guys, as always, if you like the content of this video, please support me by hitting that subscribe button. It really helps me out a lot. But without further ado, let's get into the changes. Now we're going to start off with Azir, who is quite possibly the best mid laner right now at just overall carry potential and the ability to uh, completely change the game. The first big change is his W can no longer be used on turrets, and this is going to severely reduce the speed at which Azir can take turrets, because right now he's very he, he's very good at pushing down turrets with his W because the extra magic damage that you can do, so this is going to slow down his turret taking by a good amount. However, the biggest change to Azir is actually the change coming to his ultimate. The duration that his ultimate stays up is being reduced to 3 seconds, at all ranks, which at rank 3 it was it used to be 7 seconds. So this is severely reducing the wall of protection that you have and the amount of time that you can safely deal damage to the enemy team. And this is going to really impact one, his safety, and two, your overall team fight because you can no longer wall away an entire team from your team for that full 7 seconds. So this is definitely going to cause Azir to lose some power because of how much more vulnerable he's going to be with only having that 3 second wall as opposed to a 7 second wall. And this is going to be a pretty big nerf to him, I feel. Next up we have Echo. Now these changes are almost exclusively designed to reduce tank Echo and put him back into the AP Assassin role. So first off, his passive time... Uh, the amount of time that you're locked out from proccing your passive on a target is being increased to 5 seconds from 3 seconds. So this reduces the overall damage that you can do, uh, but mostly your sticking potential because the damage wasn't too great. It was mostly the, the movement speed that you got from your passive that made Echo so annoying. So this is going to reduce the amount of times you can get that, uh, that movement speed off of the same target. Next, his Q base damage on return is being lowered, so it's doing less damage on the way back to you, but his initial AP ratio when thrown out is being increased, and this is just to help support that they want you building AP and going Assassin on Echo. Also, another really big nerf for Echo, his W stun duration is being lowered by half a second, which is actually a pretty big nerf for his team fight because one of the biggest things that Echo tries to do is get a multi-person stun off on the team, and this is going to reduce that time by half a second, which doesn't seem like a lot, but when you get two or three or four people in the, that stun, it's actually pretty big. And last but not least, his alt base damage is being reduced but the AP ratio on it is being bumped up. And this is, once again, just to try and move him more into that AP assassin role. On to the next champion. We're moving on to someone who has been strong for a good amount of patches now, and that is Kindred. Now, Kindred is re receiving a pretty hefty nerf on this patch. So her Q base damage is being lowered by a lot at higher ranks, uh, and this is going to be a big nerf to her mid-game damage. So once you hit that level, that rank 5 in her Q, right around level 9, uh, you're actually going to be doing a considerably less amount of damage every time you use it. To make up for that, her passive now increases your Q damage by 5 for each stack. However, you need 9 stacks of your passive to do the same amount of base damage on your Q once it hits rank 5. Now getting 9 stacks actually takes a, a, a pretty concerted effort and a lot of time so in that mid game when you get that rank 5 on your Q you're still going to be doing a lot less damage uh, and you won't be able to make that up until like the late late game so this is a pretty big nerf for Kindred's early mid game and then on top of that her E slow is being reduced to 50% from 70% 
and the damage is being lowered at early ranks. So once again, this is nerfing her early game damage output and a little bit of her utility. So Kindred, who's known for her good early game ganks and her early game pressure, is getting a lot of damage taken away from her early and mid game. And this is really going to affect her status as uh, you know one of the top three carry junglers in the game. Speaking of carry junglers, the next person on our list is Nidalee. Now, Kindred and Nidalee are basically one and two when it comes to damage-focused carry junglers. Uh, so this is really going to shake things up at the top of the jungle leaderboard. But Nidalee's passive range that gives you the movement speed when moving towards a target through brush is being reduced by a very large amount, from 5,500 units down to 1,400 units. This is going to give you a lot less chasing potential uh, when you're trying to catch up to people during ganks. However, the big nerf on her is coming in the form of her W, where the reset time on hunted targets is being uh, increased by a lot at early ranks. So it used to be one and a half seconds at all ranks. Now at rank one, it is uh, three and a half seconds, and then rank two, two and a half seconds, and then rank three is the same. So this is a pretty big early game nerf since you're going to be losing one or two of those pounces, those gap closers, per gank early on in the game. So this is going to really uh, take away your, some of your sticking potential and a lot of your damage output as well. Now back to the mid lane, we have Velkaz. Now Vel Velkaz's Q now slows for a longer period of time, so it's going to give him more utility. And then his ultimate now applies the stacks of his passive again. So when they did the rework, his ultimate no longer applied passive stacks. Now it does again. Uh, it's still going to deal true damage to a target if they are fully stacked at the beginning of the alt. So what this is, is really a bigger buff to your damage on targets that aren't fully stacked at the start of the alt. So in order to, to fully stack a, a team before a team fight, you would have to get pretty lucky with your Ws. Now what this is doing is it's increasing the amount of damage that Velkaz can output during a team fight since you might have one or two targets fully stacked up, but you can apply your stacks to the rest of the, the team and deal more damage if you're able to keep them in your alt for longer. So this is a, a pretty decent buff on Velkaz's alt, which is going to do a lot more damage overall to targets in a team fight now. And on to another very strong mid laner, we have Zed. Now you probably haven't seen Zed at all this patch because he's almost 100% banned. However, he is getting a nerf on this patch, so you might see him back again. His Q base damage is being reduced by a lot at rank 5, and the AD ratio is being lowered by 10%. However, the damage on hitting a target with multiple shurikens is being increased to 75% from 50%. So that second shuriken is going to do 75% of its damage as opposed to the 50% that it was doing currently. And then the same for the third one if you can hit him with the alt and your shadows. So basically what Riot is trying to do with these changes is they are trying to reward the Zeds who are you know, experienced and who are, are making the better plays. So if you hit a target with just one shuriken, you're going to be doing a considerably less amount of damage. However, if you can hit a target with two shurikens, you're going to be doing pretty much the same amount of damage that he does currently, if not maybe a little bit more, depending on where you are in the game. And if you can hit them with all three shurikens, you're actually going to be doing a pretty bit of, you know, a pretty big increased amount of damage. So what this does is it really plays into Zed's assassin risk reward uh, type of play style because if you just want to poke with your Q, you're going to be doing less damage. If you use your shadow uh, and you, you position it correctly and you're able to get both Qs off, you're going to do more damage, which you're being rewarded for better placement and better um, you know, Q placement. However, you're not going to have that shadow for your dash out. So it's a little bit of a like a risk reward which is the assassin playstyle how it should be so good zeds are actually getting a buff bad zeds are getting a nerf so it's kind of it's kind of give or take with with this zed but it's meant to be a nerf for the most part because of the reduced damage however it's a disguised buff if you're actually able to to correctly place everything in if, if you're actually good with zed 
Now change number seven is coming to Jax. And Jax's passive stacks now fall off one at a time. So his stacks that increase your attack speed stack up to eight. And the way it is currently, those stacks fall off all at once when the, the timer runs out. Now his, his passive stacks are going to fall off one at a time. And this is actually a much bigger buff than it seems since Jax can get in, get a couple of stacks, and then instead of having them all drop off at the same time, they'll just slowly drop down so he can re-engage and continue to build up those stacks. And he's going to be able to do uh, more damage than he does currently uh, at, at prolonged fights where he has to kind of get in and get out. And then to kind of tie in with the Jax changes, Triforce, the item, is actually getting a very big change. So the crit chance is being removed. Now the attack speed is being increased to 40% from 15%, so it's getting a 25% uh, attack speed increase. And the cooldown reduction is being increased to 20% from 10%. So you're getting a lot more attack speed and a lot more cooldown reduction at the redu at the while losing some crit chance. And this is a very, very big change for damage-based bruisers who don't need the crit. So people who, who want to do, they want to stick to their target, they want to do a lot of damage, but they didn't necessarily use the crit. So people like Jax and Aurelia are the first two who really come to mind that are going to benefit the most from this. Now like I said in the, the beginning of the video, the question of the video is, with these changes, you know, who do you think is going to rise up now that we haven't seen in a while because of these new changes, right? So you know, they're losing that crit chance, but they're getting more attack speed and more cooldown reduction, which is favorable on certain champions, you know, over others. And then especially with these changes and then the nerfs to the top two attack uh, and damage focused junglers, I think that Jack's jungle is going to come back very strong and it's going to be a very big thing again. Basically, with these changes, I view Jax as about to come back really strong and he's about to be very OP. So people are going to try and get him in any role possible. So what they're going to do is they're going to try and put Jax either in the top lane or uh, because Kindred and Nidalee got nerfed, maybe in the jungle as an attack, you know, more of a carry jungler again now that those two got nerfed. And then on top of that, with the nerf to Kindred and Nidalee, I also think tank junglers are going to come back uh, pretty hard because now that the carry junglers are getting nerfed and the Cinderhulk uh, buffs that happen, tank junglers are going to be more of of a thing to get a tank on your team since uh, this Triforce change is probably going to put more damage bruiser type people in the top lane. So instead of having your tank top laners, I feel like the tanks are going to move into the jungle and your damage bruisers are going to be, uh, like your carry bruisers are going to be moving into the top lane again because of these Triforce changes excuse me but yeah that's it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed everything in it um everybody i hope you're having a great day and peace